Hey folks, Steve here with another Dark Valley video. We're going to be looking at turn 5 today. I hope to be able to get through this relatively quickly because I am on a bit of a recording timer today. Uh, so I will <laughs> I will try to record as much as I can uh, and knowing that these turns may actually be a little bit shorter just because there may be less operational action uh, with the chits and then with the, the weather just being the way that it is. Uh, you can see the game state at the end of turn 4, so we're still pushing. Uh, East, um, getting closer to uh, Kharkov and Stalino, um, and then maybe can entertain ideas of going into the Crimea, Crimea Peninsula. Over here, we have approaches on to Lenin, um, forces that are sort of drifting up towards Leningrad, and then here, uh, sort of beyond Smolensk, but before Moscow, we have a whole fracas. Um, and a bunch of craziness going on here as units try to, to dig in around uh, Moscow and the Axis tries to penetrate those defensive lines. Um, so turn five actually brings us to our first, uh, I believe it is mud turn. And so I'm going to have to validate and make sure that I have mud covered in the rules and that I, I follow that. I suspect it really means we're going to have very little movement uh, for our units. Um, that we're going to be operating with. So that could be a problem, though we're awfully close to many of our goals that we would want to take anyhow. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, as usual, we start with the reinforcement and replacement phase. The Axis gets one measly little 124 unit that I put uh, near Smolensk on the supply depot. And as best that I can tell, uh, the Axis doesn't get any replacements on turn five. So, um, that's a bummer. In fact, I think the, the, the Axis won't get replacements until turn 11, though they do have some reinforcements that are going to start to stream in a little bit in later turns. But this turn, pretty low. So the Axis reinforcement and replacement phase is already done. Uh, the Soviet reinforcement segment and replacement segment is going to be worthwhile to take a look at. So we're going to get a whole string of reinforcements. The uh, Soviets are going to get Zhukov HQ back. We had lost it in the attack on Smolensk, but they're going to get it back. Um, and then we're going to get into the replacement system, which is going to be new for the uh, new for us uh, tracking the game here. We've not used that system yet, uh, where the Soviets are going to get replacements based on uh, factory cities controlled and everything else. Um, so let me set out the reinforcements for the turn, and we can take a look at how things are going. Let me just move the camera a little bit. I won't bother to put a cut here. Again, moving quickly. Um, okay, so here are the reinforcements. We get the Zhukov HQ back. We get these two armies, which uh, we've got some choices on where we want to put it. I suspect we'll probably put it in and around Moscow somehow. Uh, we get some of these armies that, if I zoom in, you should be able to see if my camera wants to zoom. You can see there's a, a red number indicator on there, and I believe what that means is that these units, when they come into the game, um, are placed into the eliminated units box. Uh, so, they come into play as replacements and may be purchased on their turn of arrival. So, we won't actually get to place these units, but they're just going to be extra armies that we put in the dead pile. Now, we already have armies in the dead pile, but now we have more of them. I'm not exactly sure what that this is representing. I assume maybe um, units that are being reorganized into armies from the depleted units. Sort of like the replacements we did for the guard units, except these aren't guards. And then we get a couple of 2-4 non-replaceable divisions. Nothing to write home about. Um, so we will have to determine where we want to put all of these guys, uh, first of all. Um... And I, I think what I'm just going to do is I'm going to set them up in and around uh, Moscow. If I can't fit them in Moscow itself, I'm going to put them in either of, uh, let's see, Kalinin or Tula, just so that we have more of these armors with Zoks in and around the Moscow area. I think that is probably going to be best for these units. So um, I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to place these guys, and then we're going to talk about the replacement factor mechanics. Okay, so I placed the units, and I basically put the two armies in Moscow, and I put the weaker units in Tula and Kalinin. I also put Zhukov down in Tula. 
I'll move him up, and he's just going to be there to help support the operational uh, organization of the Soviets in and around Moscow, since it's really going to be the hot uh, region of combat here. Um, so let's talk about replacements. So this will be kind of important uh, going forward into the game. Uh, the way this is going to work is that there are factory cities, and these are going to be Leningrad, Moscow, Stalingrad, Kiev, and Engels, and if the Soviets control that with the line of communication the East Map Edge, they get five replacement points for each of those. Um, so right now they've lost Kiev, and I believe they still have Engels. Um, I forget where Engels is on the map. Oh, okay, it's way far out east. Okay. So yeah, so the only one that the Soviets are actually missing are, yeah, it's just Kiev. That's the only one they're missing right now. So otherwise, they're going to get 5, 10, 15, 20. They're going to get 20 replacement points. In future turns, they may be able to get more from Lend-Lease. Um, starting on turn 8, we'll also get some additional ones. Okay, so 20 replacement points. Um... And with the exception of guard tank armies, a player may not replace more than one of the above types, type units per turn until one of every eliminated type is replaced. And then the, it shows the cost to rebuild them. So interesting. Um, well, the, the reality is, uh, if I look at my dead pile here, I really don't have much in the way of uh, guard tank armies or reduced guard tank armies. I don't have mech core to replace because um, I believe all the ones that were existing uh, were removed from the game when they were eliminated. Um, I'm digging through the dead pile, I'm pretty sure that's the case here. Uh, at least for the moment, that's what the situation is. Um, I should probably really organize the dead pile a little bit better. Uh, tank core, we don't have any in the dead pile at the moment. No guard mech core. No guard tank core. No guard cavalry core. No artillery core. Okay, well... There you go. So what, what we're just going to look at is replacing by combat factor. So it's going to depend on the units. And with 20 factory points, we could bring back, um, if I'm reading this correctly, infantry armies. So we can read, we can do, yeah. So let's do, let's do that. Let's rebuild some of our armies. And it doesn't really matter which ones we pick, even the ones that were added to our dead pile via reinforcements. It doesn't really matter. If we replace five rifle armies, or I'm sorry, four rifle armies, that's, you know, five replacement points uh, for each of those four uh, factory cities. Each of these armies costs five replacement points because it's five combat factors. We'll get four units for four cities. Boom. They're going to be placed as reinforcements. So again, um, probably going to put one in Kalinin, one in Tula. And then let's see here, um, one in Japaroji, and let's see, um, I will put the last one here, you know what, I, I assume we're going to get a Stavka reserve. Are we going to get a Stavka Reserve? The turn is going to be October. We are going to get Stavka. So we'll put one of these replacing units in Stavka Reserve. And then that way we can throw it down where it makes the most sense um, as special reinforcements. We do have that army that was starting to march towards Moscow and just hasn't gotten there yet. Um, maybe we can get that guy pulled forward. Um, okay, so that was the, the replacement phase, and that was the new mechanic we're introducing in turn 5 the replacement factors for factory cities. Again, 
The Soviets will gain more over time, both from Lend-Lease. Uh, on turn 8, they'll also start getting some for off-map factories. Uh, and, and then I think there's some other constraints uh, later on, like Lend-Lease ending and different things. Uh, but suffice to say, that is going to be the sort of economic com component of this game that the Soviets are going to have uh, to rebuild their units. And that will start to... Uh, It'll start to matter if, like, the Axis can take those uh, factory hexes that will reduce the ability of the Soviets to build back. Um, but again, you know, those later turn uh, mechanics will allow them to still produce uh, even even later on, though it may be in the far reaches of uh, the Russian steppe out there. Um, okay, so that is the end of that phase. Uh, next, we would go to the air base phase. Again, the Soviets don't have air. Um, I think for the moment, uh, a lot of our air force is pretty good. Um, I will probably move these guys to uh, belly. I took that, and that will provide double air coverage over here, so that's really the most important part. Um, down in the south, in the southern regions down here, uh, I think what we'll do is we will move this from Kiev to... I don't know, it's kind of tough. Um, We'll move it to where the supply depot is, and then we can start to help out up there, maybe. Um, well, we probably need the help down here, so so scratch that. We'll move it to Cherkasy, Cherkasy, and then these guys, this one will move up to Uman. So there we go. We've got plenty of air uh, shroud there along the way. So that's it for the airbase phase. And we're going to do the strategic movement phase. Now, um, again, we've had some challenges with actually getting to do a whole lot of this. Um, let me get to that. Make sure I do it right. Turn 11, Axis gets rail movement. It's not turn 11. There's no Axis naval movement that I really want to do. Uh, Soviet rail movement. Um, so I think we will do a couple of things. We're going to move this unit that was way in back here. And... Hmm, I think what we might do is just plunk him right there and we'll, can, well, maybe... There we go. And he will just be an annoyance. So that was two steps. And then uh, we will move... Well, I'm not sure if there's any other ones that really make a whole lot of sense for us to accomplish here. Um, maybe in the north, up there, we could pull some units back. And that would be two more steps. So that's four steps moved by rail. Just pulling back. Um, naval movement. I don't think we're going to do any naval movement. Amphibious invasion, airdrop. No, no, no. Okay, so that would lead us into the action phase. Now, one thing that's different on turn five, that's different than the other turns, is that for the first time, the Soviets have the initiative. So we will look at uh, the... Um, string of activation shits for this turn as usual, talk about the strategy, and then we will get into things. So, um, we'll take a look. Okay, so, <laughs> this is going to be a clear indicator of the change in tempo as we get going here, and things aren't going to be so peachy keen for the Axis, not that I've used them to the most effective way possible. As usual, we have the logistic logistics chit, blah, uh, we have the movement or combat, um, so the Axis will get to pick. Again, they only get one combat or one movement, but basically it's you know two chits out of what available chits there are that will give them that choice of moving or combating, whichever makes sense for them at that moment. Because they don't have initiative, they're not going to get to pick 
one right away, so it's really going to be to the mercy of the cup and whatever they draw that it really matters here. It's sort of the first turn that it really matters that they have a movement or combat, two of these move or combat chits. Um, the schedule also said any three Panzer activation chits, which means we basically had to pick one of the four not to go into the cup. And I thought about this for a second, and I think, well, firstly, we need the second and third Panzer armies active. These are the ones that are in uh, Army Group North in the bottle, battle for Moscow. So, yes, those have to activate this turn, I think. Uh, and then I also had the first Panzer activate. This is the one that's sort of down here um, where we have just a lot of fun chaos going around in, in Ukraine. Uh, so I think they need to activate. And, you know, we won't get to activate the fourth Panzer up here in the north. I think that's okay because with a combat shit, I'm going to want to try to collapse the Talenin bubble there. And then with, you know, like the movement shit, we can sort of start working our way towards Leningrad. We'll leave that to other turns um, to deal with. We'll, we'll focus on these areas of importance. Um, and then if you look at what the Soviets have, uh, there's actually quite a big difference. So we have our Stavka marker. So this will, I have to remember, to leave this out of the cup. Um, and this is, again, going to be, you know, we'll pull units from our reserve, in which case we just have one army in reserve. We'll pull it from reserve, and we'll potentially move and attack with it. Not a big deal. Um, and, and in hindsight now, I'm wondering, hey, maybe if I had put more units into reserve, then when I play Stavka and I throw them down, they can all activate and attack, and that might be like, it's almost like that free activation, but I only put one unit in reserve. So I guess in hindsight... Maybe I made a mistake here as the Soviets and only having one unit in the Stavka Reserve. But I made a bunch of mistakes as the Axis, so whatever. Uh, and then finally, uh, instead of a counterattack chit, this is really important, we no longer have those crappy counterattack chits that just screwed up the Soviet front line. In fact, if I'm looking at the chart, I'm pretty sure we're never going to use that chit again. Um, instead, the Soviets have a move and a combat chit. They're not or chits. It's, you draw it, it's a move, you draw it, it's a combat, and that's it. But, you know, we're used to the move, but now the Soviets get a true combat chit. And what that is going to enable them to do is make very focused and, and sharp attacks that they want to make. Um, they don't have to make stupid attacks that won't do them any good, and so you attack anyway, hoping maybe to take some unit, you know, some axis down with you, because you're going to lose the unit anyway. No, here, they can do real attacks. They can choose not to attack. They can do whatever. The problem is still the order and the fact that they don't have a choice when the chits come up, but the Soviets are getting something that resembles a normal order of command here uh, and, and activation actions, so that's good stuff for them, for sure. So, uh... Okay, um, so the, the first move here is going to be for the Soviets. They're going to get their first activation. Obviously, you know, Stavka, probably not important. And so what the Soviets really need to decide is, do they want to combat right now or move? Moving might allow the forces in the south to pull back a little bit and maybe around Moscow to form a more orderly line. Um... But attacking might enable us to destroy some of these Axis units that are still technically out of supply. They can't move, but whatever attacks that we do have might be valuable. So I'm going to need to take some time and think through the options and, and what I can do here. Um, and in fact, I'm pretty sure I'm out of recording time for today. When is today? You don't need to know that. <laughs> for you, it'll just be a split second and I'll be back to recording the action stage, the action phase of this turn. Uh, for me, it might be several days, if not more. Um, so, uh, we'll see what happens. But anyway, uh, we'll catch you in a bit with the first Soviet activation. We'll talk through it then. Uh, hey folks, Steve here, getting back to recording turn 5. I had to take a bit of a break uh, from one day to the next just because uh, there was some stuff going on. Got busy, but we're back at it. And I think... What we're going to do is we're going to have the Soviets, because it's their initiative, uh, do a combat. And it is purely out of the desire to uh, damage the spearhead of the German forces in Army Group Center. 
you can see, uh, some units were able to be supplied. We have several that were not. I think if they do a combat now, there are enough decent combats that they can choose, uh, especially with the strong five combat factor armies, uh, to to blunt that spearhead. And that's going to be really important because we're sort of in like the late stages here of the 1941 offensive. Um, weather is beneficial to the Soviets at this point. The Axis are getting bogged down. Um, and whatever they do now to blunt that spearhead will mean a less likely chance on, on the German activations uh, to getting to Moscow and, and attacking it. So um, if we're able to eliminate some units, uh, that could prove very useful, and then they'll just have less forces to bring to bear against these final lines of defense. So it's really going to be around there that, that the attacks are going to be useful. I don't think any other attacks will make sense. I'll look up here, but I don't think the Talinin stack is going to be able to do anything to the mass uh, Axis forces around them. Down here, uh, I really don't see any attacks that are going to prove useful. Um, they probably just simply uh, have units be eliminated. Um, though maybe in Odessa they just do a breakout attack and punch some Romanians in the face and, and give them a black eye. We'll see what happens there. But down here in the south, I, I don't see any attacks that really make a whole lot of sense. Um, it's all about blunting that spearhead. And, you know, the, the again, the game strategy for the Soviets is let's delay delay, 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 whatever it takes at this point, if we can blunt them, if we can hurt them, um, they're not going to be able to make gains here. The other interesting thing is, uh, because we are in a full-on mud turn, uh, the Axis mechanized units do not project a zone of control. So you can find that in 6.1, the zones of control rules. So mechanized Zox... Um, do not extend Zoc beyond their own hex during mud turns or in snow turns. Uh, or in snow turns seven and nine. Oh, never mind. I guess they. I guess they will. I guess they will project Zox even in mud, um, based on how that's worded. So, so never mind on that one. Um, but, you know, the mud is still an, an impact here that we need to keep in mind. So I'm just trying to look. So so no big deal for, uh, let's see. Is there anything else to worry about here? So with mud, it is going to be minus two movement points for all axis, mech, motor units, and one... Minus one movement point for all other Axis and Soviet units. No forced march. So, yeah, it's really, you know, here is where um, things are going to slow down quite a bit. And really all the Soviets have to do is make it more painful. Uh, more painful for... Um, more painful for the Axis to proceed forward. The other thing is, uh, as I'm reading here... Um, because we're not mixed weather, it's, it is mud, uh, the Axis isn't going to get to use air supply for its mechanized units. So, again, all, all this feeding back into the desired strategy to hurt the, uh, the Axis here. So, I'm going to take us off camera, and I'm going to conduct the combats. Um, they're going to be pretty straightforward. You know, I think we're going to do an attack right here, um, maybe here... Definitely on that out of supply unit because it's going to get the plus two modifier, and then maybe over here. Though I don't think I have enough forces to make it super worthwhile. Um, and those stacks are going to, you know, include, you know, some of those forces that would be needed to get up and around Moscow, um, and and even all of those units that were air, supplied by air. You know, they have minus two movement points. Well, if they're mechanized, they have a further minus two movement point. So. Um, it's going to take everything they can just to move a couple of hexes through the forest uh, forest terrain nearby. So, yeah, this is, you know, things are getting kind of tight. It's getting difficult for the Axis to, to move forward. Um, so we'll be right back with uh, the end of the combats. Okay, well, I did the combats, and I only did a couple, and they ended up not being exactly as good as I was hoping they would end up being. Uh, but we did get rid of a couple of steps of Axis, so uh, there was the out-of-supply 
motorized infantry right around here, and it was eliminated uh, for the cost of um, cost of one unit or one step loss. Um, and I just realized I took step loss incorrectly. I think. Um, Yes, I screwed that up. So I will, I will fix very simply. Uh, so it's here, and let's simply do that. We won't advance after combat. Okay. Uh, and then we had an attack right over here around that salient, uh, right here. And what ended up happening was uh, we scored a DR star result on the out-of-supply Panzer unit, which had to retreat and took a step loss, a DR star, because it had two steps, it had to lose a step, and is now um, in this stack with a fellow out-of-supply unit. So they just have the one out-of-supply marker on top for both units, uh, so it is reduced now. And you can sort of see now, like, that salient got pushed back a little bit, and I'm debating, you know, do I have that unit advance? And I don't think I, I don't think I do. I think I leave them because I want them to be harder to get past, not, you know, circumvented. They need to bust through. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that was it for that. We're going to go ahead and pull the next chip. And it's going to be the first Panzer. First Panzer activation. Uh, that is going to put us down here in the south. I think what's going to end up happening here is we do a combat and move or a moving combat. Um, if we do a moving combat, only the mechanized units can move. We're nearby a couple of uh, a couple of victory point cities. So if we can, it would be good to kind of bust through there and and beat up on them. But they're going to be able to trace supply down through the south here, so it's not going to be a complete envelopment if we do bust through. Um, but, you know, if we do combat and then move, we're probably just going to clear a whole bunch of these weak Soviet units and just cause a general advance, and I do like the sound of that. Um, so I think that's what we're probably going to do, combat and then move, um, so that everybody can attack and then surge forward. Uh... Yeah, I think that'll work. So um, I will come back and show the results of that. So again, first Panzer, and you know we'll basically be activating everybody sort of right here uh, based on the command uh, command radius. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so what we've done now, uh, and whoops, I wanted to just let me change that. There we go. So what I've done is uh, we managed to knock out a couple of units, we advanced forward, and using, uh, though our uh, armor had reduced movement, we were able to kind of create uh, the sort of mini pocket here, uh, which should, once we get to the um, I, uh, logistics phase, these units should be isolated, uh, because we do have Zox sort of covering all the way. Um, these units down here are fine. Uh, here are sort of okay for supply. I think this guy right here might have a problem, but these three are okay, but the rest of the Zox are going to prove a problem. So we're going to net one victory point out of that, and then you know we can look towards these victory point cities here and here to come, but we need to kind of get further afield. We were able to get a couple of units activated to move forward, um, but there's some limited activity there with it. So uh, we still have the, the German, uh, you know, attack and move left, so that could be useful here to come. We'll call ahead and pull from the cup, and we get uh, the German combat or move. Um, phew, tough call. I think we may want to do a move here. Um, because the move will enable us to get a few of our units that are sort of locked up uh, in a position to get some of these victory point cities down here isolated, I think. So I, I think we'll do a move. I think we'll pick the move. We'll do a combat later. But what we'll do, that'll enable us to move everything over here. We'll move 
you know, stuff around here so we can start, you know, swinging out around maybe this way. Um, or we could try to go forward to Kharkov, but, you know, it's the distance that's going to be our real limiter here with the mud going on. Um, and then that'll allow us up here to kind of reconfigure ourselves for future attacks as they come up. So this is going to take a while for me to do, but I'll take care of it and we'll come back. Well, the effects of the mud are surely uh, having a factor here. So I was able to kind of move some units around. Nothing too, too crazy. Um, it's, you know, the mud coupled with uh, the harsher terrain like the forests and the swamps just makes it hard to get where I want to be. So I was able to make some adjustments up in the north, some uh, forward movement uh, towards Leningrad there, um, pulling some units sort of forward because as soon as the logistics chit comes up, all those units should be in supply or very nearly in supply. Um, so not too bad. Uh, we couldn't quite get to Kharkov and uh, we were able to snake around a little bit with some of those units, but they couldn't really quite get to where we can for sure cut units out of supply. So that's going to be part of our problem as we uh, as we get moving here into a potential combat later down the road. So um, now would be an okay time for logistics. I wouldn't mind it, um, though maybe a second or third Panzer activation would be a little bit better because then we could knock some of these other stuff, uh, some of these other guys out of supply. So we're going to go to the cup and we're going to see what we get. And we've got it, and it is third Panzer. Okay. So third Panzer is going to be our sort of southern part of our uh, army group center. So we'll work this way. Um, we might, might, might be able to repocket that salient because they haven't been able to extricate themselves. But we're going to have to go through a full strength army to do it, and that could be our problem. So, um, I, I will have to look at doing, again, either movement and combat, or combat and movement. Um, we're kind of at the stage over here where, like, movement and combat is probably better, uh, so that we can get some, uh, uh, pincer attacks going. You know, I got a comment on a previous video, oh, I don't see very big, big pincers. Well, it's kind of hard to now, um, terrain's a big factor in getting the, the, pincers to happen, and then you have to understand um, that there are issues where uh, enemy zocks do slow us down, and we can't just wrap around everything super easily. Um, if there are enemy zocks from armies present, we have to kind of navigate through that, and even with the additional bonus movement uh, potential for, for the Axis, it is kind of hard. So so we may be able to repocket that center salient, I'm not sure. But we might also just say screw it and try to find another path around and just pocket an even larger set of guys as we go towards Moscow. Um, it's really kind of hard to say. So uh, I will handle this activation. It's probably, well, I'm going to have to look at it. Um, I'm going to have to look at it. Our, our other problem that we're going to end up having here is that uh, I believe there is a impact of weather on our air power. I need to double check some of that. Um, it is somewhere. I thought I had read something where, you know, the Axis air is all used up. Um, well, that's not until turn seven. Okay, we've got a little bit of time. Okay, well, well I'll see what I can do here. Um, again, either movement and combat with just the mechs, or combat and move. Uh, combat and move is more likely to probably give us some more encirclement, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're not getting quite where we want to be. We managed to just, just straight out destroy a couple of those units. There was no use waiting for the logistics. So I took out what I could, I moved forward what I could, and we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. I mean, we're pushing, we're getting awfully close, but, you know, it's like... <laughs> Moscow's in sight, but it feels like, you know, forever away. Um, going to the next chit pull is second panzer. So um, we're going to get to activate the north side, and we ought to be able to finish off that encircled unit. Don't wait for logistics. Just boot them, move forward, get ready for the next combat. So that's what we'll do.
Okay, uh, well, we're, we're pretty well positioned for the Axis general combat shit when it comes up. Um, some units are still out of supply, but when supply is checked, they'll be in supply. Uh, this is because we're able to get supply from this... Uh, let's see if I can get my finger on there. Ah, that supply marker is just able to count back over to that HQ, which can provide supply nearby, so we're, we're actually got pretty good coverage, and we're up on the new line of defense. Now what we need is, uh, you know, we're able to clear our obstacles. Now it's about, you know, another attack that could allow us to puncture this line and get close to Moscow, but at this point, I, I don't think we're going to be taking Moscow this turn, but if we can knock out the defenders that are along this line here, next turn we might just be able to do it. Um, it's really going to depend on you know, what happens here, so, um, we'll see, it, it, it's going to get harder and harder every turn going forward now to do it, that's the problem, so we're so close, and yet so far, going back to the chip, uh, we pull the Soviet move marker, okay, um, right away I can tell you in the north, no movements to make, no use, here, we might need to do some adjustments, we might even want to pull these guys up, towards Moscow to aid in that defensive line, though we don't want to give up some victory cities. That's our real problem. Down here, uh, we've got some units that are kind of stuck in Zox, but there could be a potential to try to realign the, uh, the situation. It's just we've got a lot of weak cities, so um, we'll do the move, but there's really not much movement that we're going to be able to do as the Soviets that can change our overall situation. So we'll be right back. Well, down here in the south, we, they managed to get a really amusing setup here. So we got just enough to provide them access to a rail line that will uh, provide supply, basically. Um, I'm pretty certain that the... Well, actually... got to look at the Kirsch Straits because that could be an important part of what's happening here. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think that provides supply. It's, say, it's saying that um, any port on the Black Sea is a supply source for Soviet units, as long as the Soviet, Soviets control any other Black Sea port. So I think maybe the, the move would have been this, just to make sure. So what we're trying to do here is like, okay, these units can, some of which can count back to, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five hexes covered by friendly units to a rail line that can be traced back to supply. We also took a unit out of Japaroji just to make it harder for these Axis units to wrap around Japaroji and to protect that rail line um, a little bit, a little bit better. Um, Though, I guess there's still a Zoc here, so it's like, it, you can count the ports as supply sources, um, as long as we have other ports on the Black Sea, so I'm, I'm pretty certain these guys are all in supply. Um, and unless the Axis were to break the chain right here, which they could do, but not probably now, well, with the combat shit, I guess. So right now it's going to matter, like, does, does the logistics chip come up, or do we get a combat? And I think at this point, we actually want the Axis combat shit to come up first so that we have the potential to, to lock down some of these encirclements and get them out of supply. Um, uh, elsewhere, you know, we really only made slight adjustments to our line just, again, to make it harder for the Axis to get through. But, you know, I didn't want to move any units up here because they're basically, you know, as set up as good as they can get. We've got Zox, we've got armies, they're in the woods, um, able to maybe fall back to the next layer defensive line over here if they retreat to protect Moscow. So I think that's as good as the Soviets can do with their move. We're going to go back to the chit. It's only the combat or logistics. So 
Axis combat or logistics. So if the Axis gets their combat, that's probably best for them. If they don't, uh, you know, they're, they're still doing okay, but I think we want that combat ship to come up. Let's see what we get. And it is the Axis combat ship. Okay. All right, Axis combat shit it is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just nuke that unit. We're going to attack it. It's going to be simple. Blow it up. We're going to attack this unit, break that chain of supply for the rest of the units, or maybe, yeah, attack this unit, and that'll bust up the supply path for the rest of these guys. Um, around here, we probably won't attack. We might poof some of these other guys. Really, I mean, like... That unit's going to go poof with logistics, so, so it's almost like we won't attack unless we have to. But up here, we are definitely going to have to look at some attacks all along the line to try to, to bust some holes open uh, and hopefully um, knock some guys out. And what's really critical here is like we know the last shit is going to be logistics, right? If we know that's the last one, what we don't want to do is put our own units out of supply, right? Because um, it could be a while before they're brought back into supply after logistics. But whatever we put out of supply functionally now, we know will be marked out of supply, and we know uh, will likely potentially be um, removed via attrition if we can isolate them. So all the attacks here are going to be in that thought process. If we can do it, we'll try to do it, and then that will hopefully eliminate a whole bunch of units for us as we make our continued progress uh, to the east. So I'm going to take us off camera. I'm going to take care of an attack on Talinan, probably. Then we will work our way down south all the way through, and we'll take a look at the map when we're done. Not a good, uh, not a good combat. So in Talon, we got an attacker loss. It's a bummer. Die roll really is making the difference there. Um, it might have been okay, but just couldn't get it. Over here, we just didn't get where we wanted to either. I would really have liked to have. Uh, I was. I, I could have isolated. A Soviet army, sort of on the main line to Moscow, and I failed to do that. And so, um, we didn't get very far, is basically what happened. We, we took, we forced some retreats, we moved forward a little bit, but we're just kind of breaking down and not getting the die rolls that we needed. I rolled very poorly where I could roll. Um, so we're kind of stuck. Uh, down in the south, we were a little more successful. Um, so we eliminated some units. And then down here, you can see we reestablished. We're going to isolate those guys, and we're going to pick up a victory city while we're at it. So that's good. Um, so we do, uh, if we look at logistics now, you know, we can do our logistics, right? These guys are going to be isolated for sure, and they will get picked off the map. But real quick, I'll just take us off camera. I'll just double check all the supply situations and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, so unless I'm mistaken, the only thing I really had here was that these guys are out of supply. Um, this guy is in supply. Now he was out of supply, he's in supply. These guys are out of supply, they're just a little bit too far out of range, which is kind of a bummer uh, at the moment. Um, and then we had some guys further up that are in supply now, that were not in supply earlier. Um, not a big deal. And that's really it. There wasn't a whole lot different. So we've got guys are up there, fine for supply. All these Soviets in the general area are in supply, so they don't really have any problems. Um, they can count five spaces basically back to like a rail line supply source, so uh, for the most part they're okay. So uh, that is it, and then when we get to, uh, so if we take a look at our sequence of play, we are going to do our, uh, well, technically we'll have our Axis Depot, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and just take care of the um, things are getting a little messy around here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the isolation removal because we just want to take care of that. So what we ended up doing is we got rid of this tank brigade um, that the Soviets got that's non-replaceable. We got rid of an army, which is good. 
And we got rid of another weak little guy. No big deal. And we technically get control of Cravoy, uh, Cravoy Rog. So let me get a control marker out for that guy. And we will go up a victory city. With still several more nearby. But gosh, it's getting hard getting there, right? Um, okay, so we're going to do our uh, good old advancing the supply markers. So starting at the top. You now at this point, I'm not sure where I want them to go. Um, one, two, three, four. Seven. Okay, so what I I guess what I will do I'll, I'll move the most north one forward north if I can. So we're in mud and snow, which means at most the supply markers are going to move up only three hexes. Ugh. Well, this one will move up two hexes, so we'll do one, two. Uh, we'll do the other one down here. Rolling the die. It's going to go up three. So one, two, three. That's good. Um, then we will look down here. We really need to roll well for this one. And I uh, roll crap. So the depot is not even to Smolensk. So this is going to be a major problem for supply. This is real bad. Really bad, actually. Um, phew, dang. Over here, um, of course, this one gets to move three. So we'll do... Oh, one, two, three, I guess, or maybe like that. I'm trying to look at... Yeah, I guess that's okay. We want to send that, that supply down south. It's probably the right move. Uh, next one in Kiev. Also gets to move three, so one, two, three. Not getting terribly far. And we have this one down here. Here. Okay, on camera. We've got two down here, this guy. Let's move three, so we'll do one, two, three. And then the one down here really doesn't have very many places to go, um, unfortunately. So I wonder if I can defer moving it. Because I really don't know where I would even send it right now is the problem. Um, I've got to fix my maps. It's a little off. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's going to move two hexes. So, I think I had it coming down, and it's almost irrelevant. Do one, two. I'm not sure. Okay, well that's done. Um, German air supply. Uh, I don't need to do that, and in fact I can take off my... Uh, I have a couple leftover markers out here. I can take these off. I don't think I actually need to provide. Uh, I could provide supply down here, but um, I might not be able to based on the weather. Let me. If it's not fair weather or mixed, we can't. Oh, that's right, we can't. Okay. So no air supply. We did our attrition. Victory check. Uh, you know, we're at like 22, 23 victory points. I might need to do a double count later. But otherwise, we're going to go to turn six, and um, things start to get a little messy. It's a mixed uh, weather turn, so mixed of mud and snow. And for some reason, I think that's treated like exactly the same as like clear fair weather in mud. I'm not sure why that is. Um, but yeah, turn six is coming up, and that's going to be probably the most important turn here, right? We need to punch through the final line of defense around Moscow and then take Moscow. And honestly, I don't know how the Axis is going to be able to do it. They want a late logistics chip. They want uh, a, they want both Panzer armies and the General Axis combat chip to come up all before uh, logistics because they need to punch through, get next to Moscow, attack it, hope to take it. Maybe they need like a DR result. Um, and then that's it. I mean, that that's what it's going to take. And if they can do it, they win the game. I managed to win a victory no matter how badly I've done in the game up to this point. But I just don't know how we're going to how we're going to get there. There's just too much strength there. And the Soviets are about to get, yet again, another boatload of reinforcements. Um, it's just getting really tough and really tight. And we're going to see even more 
not just reinforcements, but also the replacements that are coming with the uh, Soviet production. So, yeah, I don't know. I think we go for broke, right, as the Axis. We do everything we can. We try everything we can. And if we fail, um, we can evaluate the game state and decide if we're going to start fresh with Case Blue uh, later. Um, so, anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you're enjoying. We will look to do turn six uh, coming up. And uh, until next time, take care and uh, keep on gaming.